All right, ladies and gentlemen, you two citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy Dash the True Inferno. <laughs> and yes, here are the results for the voting. Remember, I asked you guys which 80s album should I review for this week? And the choices were Power by Ice T, Done by the Forces of Nature by the Jungle Brothers, King of Rock by One DMC, and he's the DJ. I'm the rapper by Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Now, believe it or not, we actually had another tie. Yes, another tie. Therefore, I'm gonna do vote, and it's between King of Rock and he's the DJ. I'm the rapper. So yeah, there you go with that. So that's what we are going to roll with. And I'm decided to reveal. Uh, he's the DJ I'm the rapper first because I feel like it you know it's just that simple I just feel like it so yeah without wasting any more time let's get straight into it so he's the DJ I'm the rapper is the second studio album done by the hip hop duo DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince so yes what I mean by the Fresh Prince I'm talking Will Smith here yes from, you know that Will Smith it was the first double disc album or the first double album in hip hop music. So this was the one that started it all right there. And it was done in its original vinyl incarnation. And this album um, made triple platinum on February 1st, 1999. I mean, 1995, excuse me. And it is the duo's most successful album. And let me, let me, let me set the record straight here. This album does not, does not include their all-time famous track summertime that is not on this album that's like two albums down the road i crap you not so yeah there you go with that so this was this album came on march 29th 1988 98 88 and it was recorded from 1987 to 1988 and it was done under jive records and rca records and the producers involved were pete harris the first prince and dj jazzy jeff that's it so, there are a grand total of 17 tracks. One of them kind of feels like a skit, although it's only like four minutes and seven seconds long. So, if we were to say that track was a skit, we're going to say that there are 16 tracks in here. So, that means I can give you a part, uh, a top five rather, not a top three. But yet, at the same time, some of these tracks don't involve limits. They're just scratches, which is acceptable because... Who made this album? And what the album's called again? He's the DJ. I'm the rapper. DJ Jazzy Jeff. The first Prince. I mean, come on now. So, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's get on with the tracks that are on this album. And I get on with a bit of a back... A little, a little tiny bit of controversy regarding one of the tracks. So, the first... And I, how I run it. This is the one that has the controversy. The first track, Nightmare on My Street. And this is the single. We'll get more on the singles in a minute. Followed by track number two, Here We Go Again. Followed by Brand New Funk. Track number four is called Time to Chill. Followed by Charlie Mack. And in parentheses, First Out of the Limo. Track number six is called As We Go. Followed by... I want to say this is... Yeah, this is their second most famous track. Parents Just Don't Understand. Track number seven right there. Track number eight is called Pump Up the Bass, followed by Let's Get Busy, Baby. <laughs> Track number 10 is called Live at Union Square, and then in parentheses, November 1986. Track number 11 is called DJ on the Wheels, followed by My Buddy. Track number 13 is called Rhythm Track, T-R-A-X, and then in parentheses, House Party Style. Followed by, ironically, the name of the album for track number 14. He's the DJ. I'm the rapper. Followed by Hip Hop Dancers theme. Followed by Jazzy's in the house. And track number 17, the last track off this album. Human Video Game. So, like I said, there are three singles that came from this album. The first single, which is called Brand New Funk, however, was only released promotionally. Therefore, it did not achieve any type of su commercial success. So, there's not much to talk about with that one. So, yeah, let's move on to the next single. And 
we are well again it's the ironically it's the second single and ironically it's the second most i wouldn't say successful maybe yeah maybe it is successful who knows it could be first though but i'm gonna say it's the second most famous track ever and that is parents just don't understand that's the second single so yeah let's get on with it now parents just don't understand came out as a single February 17, 1998. And the song won a Grammy Award for Best Rap Performance at the 1989 Grammy Awards. One of the two songs to do so before the award was discontinued in 1991. It peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. And it was only released on vinyl. And it was referenced several times on the television show, The First Prince of Bel-Air. The song was ranked number 96 on VH1's 100 Greatest Songs of Hip Hop. And the music video was featured in the 2003 film Malibu's Most Wanted. And obviously a number of people did cover versions of the song. In fact, um, Little Romeo, 3LW, if you remember them, and Nick Cannon uh, did a cover for the song, which appeared on the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius soundtrack. And a video was made with cameo appearances from Vanessa Williams and Whoopi Goldberg. And the song was used by a young Tupac Shakur in the music video. He made, ironically, he made that with Smith's future wife, Jada Peckin. Not <laughs> crap, you not. So, yeah, and uh, the song was covered by Amy Poehler in the second season premiere of Parks and Recreation. Recreation, rather, excuse me. So, yeah, let's check out the other charts. Austria, it was as high as number 49. Canada Top Singles, 28th. New Zealand, 13th. UK Singles, 87th. I already talked about the Billboard Hot 100. It was high number 12. Billboard Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs, number 10. So, yeah, there you go with that. And now to the third single, which is called, and this is where the controversy is right here, A Nightmare on My Street. So this single came out August 1st, 1988. It was actually recorded in 1987. And the song became a crossover hit in the U.S., reaching 15th on the Hot 100. And the song was released on vinyl and audio cassette tape. And the song was considered for inclusion in the movie A Nightmare on Elm Street for The Dream Master. But the producers of the film decided against its inclusion. New Line Cinema copyright holders of the A, A Nightmare on Elm Street film franchise sued DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince record label for copyright infringement, forcing the label to destroy a music video produced for the song. Both sides eventually settled out of court, but as a result, final pressings of the album, He's the DJ, I'm the Rapper, contained a disclaimer sticker that says, this song, uh, which is in the um, Bracket, by the way, this song part is not part of the soundtrack and is not authorized, licensed, or affiliated with the Nightmare on M Street films, which is kind of dumb. Well, I guess I don't know, and yeah, there you go with that. So, let's check out the charts for this one. It made the uh Canada top singles high number 61 and the Billboard Hot R.I.B. Hip Hop Songs, it was number nine there. So, yeah, there you go with that, with the singles. Now, let's get on with my favorite track off of this album. And again, you know the routine. We're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. Now, these are the worst tracks off the album. But first and foremost, let me start off with the track I consider to be more of a skit. And that's Live at Union Square. With, and then in parentheses November 1986 so this one they're actually performing at Union Square and it's just basically Will Smith aka the French Prince being the hype man while Jazzy Jeff scratches and, and the scratches are dope as heck but it still feels like a skit like it's not it don't feel like an actual track I don't know maybe cause he's scratching and again this is a this jockey slash rapper album that's the title but at the same time, you know, the whole, oh, they're live at so-and-so. I mean, we could, we could call it a track. But I'm going to say it's a skit just to be safe. Now, starting from the bottom, and that's not the worst track off this album, by the way. Um, I have to say, As We Go is the worst album, or the worst track off this album. Followed by Time to Chill, 
Let's Get Busy Baby and Human Video Games. Those four tracks was eh. Now let's move on up. Parents Just Don't Understand is a classic. My Buddy Was Good, Jazz in the House, and that's one of the, I believe, yeah, four tracks only where DJ Jazzy, Jazz, Jazzy Jeff scratches. No Will Smith rapping or anything like that. We ain't counting live at Union Square. And then the next track is Charlie Mack, and then I'm going to see Buzz Out the Limo. That was pretty good. Now let's get to some of the really good stuff. Hip Hop Dancers theme. Now the next three tracks are all nothing but Jazzy Jeff scratches here. Hip Hop Dancers theme, DJ on the reels, and rhythm tracks, out party style, which is again parentheses. Those three tracks was really good. I really like that rhythm track star. That joint was all cold, man. Now, fifth best track off the album, Nightmare on My Street. It's creative and it's a little bit funny in the beat. And funny, a little bit funny. And the beat is like not bad. The beat's actually um pretty good. Like I can't front. And again, you know, the, the lyrics behind it is pretty funny, you know, so and creative. So especially at that time. So yeah, I can't really hate on it. And I actually like it. Now here's where things get really good. Number four, he's the DJ, I'm the rapper. This one contains lyrics and scratches. And the lyricism in this track is dope, dope as hell. Like, I was like, going back to it, I'm like, okay, obviously we know about Will Smith rapping's career uh, in the mid-90s, mid to late 90s. I mean, he created some classic tracks there, but if you were to look at him lyrically, you'd probably go, he's all right, or he sucks, or something like that. But back then, in the late 80s, early 90s, like, with this joint... I, like he was up there like i ain't gonna front like after hearing he's the dj i'm the rapper not well obviously the album but this track right here i'm like yo he has it kind of dope and here's another example track the best th the third best track off this album brand new funk that joint is lyrically dope that is the best track off this album lyrically though i was like yo and the beat wasn't bad but it's the lyricism that won me over and I'm like, dog, he's, he was actually dope back then when he was like 17, 18, 19, or whatever. Because if you go back to that, again, live at Union Square track, which was done in November 1986, he said that he was 17. So, and this album came out, it was recorded, like, in 1987. So, he was around 17, 18, like I said, dog. And I'm like, he's actually pretty dope. You know, I ain't gonna front. In fact, I need to get check out their first album, um, Rock the House. See how it was back the end, the, the third album, which is called And In This Corner, which came out a year later. Rock the House came out the year before this album. But yeah, the brand new funk, man, that joint is dope, man. Number two, Pump Up the Bass. Pump Up the Bass is really nice. It's really the beat that won me over with this one. The beat did it for me. Really dope beat right there. Um, but the best track off this album, here we go again. The beat is really nice. The beat for that one won me over, man. It was really, really dope. And that's all I can say, man. Here we go. The best track off this album. Now, let's get on with the professional ratings. All Music gave it... Wow, look at this. All Music gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Robert Chris Gow gave it a B-. And Sputnik Music gave it 4 out of 5 stars. So, what do I think about this album? Well, before I get into that real quick, let me um, explain something real quick. It was number four on the, um, what's this chart card? Oh, yeah, the Billboard Top 200. It was a size number five on the top R&B slash hip-hop albums. 23rd in the uh, Canadian album charts. 47 in the New Zealand charts. And in the UK, which is the UK album charts, it was high number 68. So, yeah, there you go with that. Now, they said that this was DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince most successful album. I'm, and they did a grand total of five. And I'm looking at the other four and I'm like, yeah. And let me explain something to you real quick. Their most famous track of all time is Summertime. And that track came in their fourth album, Home Base, which was platinum. So that was their second most successful um, album ever. So, I, I don't know. I can't really say this is their best album ever. I haven't heard the other four. I want to say I heard this one. He did DJ I'm the Rapper before or Home Base. It's one of those two that I heard one. I need a, I don't know. But anywho, regarding this album, I'm going to say this is a 4.25 out of 5. 
it's really good i think you should have a digital copy in your collection if you have a physical copy in your collection that's fine too but mostly a digital copy whether you bought, bought it or you downloaded it for free uh you should have this in your copy any way shape or form 4.25 out of 5 stars he's the dj i'm the rapper by dj jazzy jeff and the fresh prince now next week i'm going to review king of rock by one dmc and believe it or not i have not heard that album so that will change by next week so with that said man y'all know who this is this is the new jay gatsby aka the new stephen a smith saying peace out y'all and i'll see y'all next time yeah